Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today I got another uh, cane mill in the shop that has come in actually from a local person that has seen some of my videos on YouTube about uh, working on these things. And uh, they're getting ready to do some cane grinding here in about a month. Uh, they're going to have a little cane grinding event down at their place. And they've got this cane mill and they're having some issues with it now. And they told me that they had tried doing some work to it themselves uh, and uh, probably just want me to go in here and, and look at it and see what needs to be done. So uh, I, I'm not exactly sure what all they did to it. I know that they uh, poured bearings in here, uh, although I think there's some issues with some of them. I'm not sure yet. The biggest thing they said that they were having with this mill is that whenever they load it, the one of the gears in the top is somehow slipping and not catching and it's just not working right and you know one thing that i noticed real quick is even though it's got new bearings on here when i come in here and try to turn this thing i mean it ought to it ought to move pretty pretty uh easily and right out of the gate it seems to be kind of froze up and it may just have something to do with the bearings not being set right i'm not sure so anyway today's task is we're going to tear into this thing take a look at it see if we can figure out a couple of the problems that they describe see if there's anything obvious that needs to be done to it and do whatever needs to be done to it even though these bearings on here were recently poured we may end up having to re-pour some of them uh, not sure yet so let's get in here and see what we can find out So we have torn this thing down to its components and um, I've been sitting here evaluating things, trying to come up with a game plan on what we're gonna do. So first off, um, these bearings are pretty much all shot. I think he told me these were freshly poured, but I don't know what's going on. It looks like they came in here and maybe ground out some and you can tell where it's kind of galled in here on a couple of these and pull a top layer off. Uh, it looks like there may have been, this babbit may have been poured in two different layers and they're separating. I'm not sure what's going on, but I am sure of what we need to do. And that is we need to melt this babbit out and re-pour all these bearings. So uh, I think that's gonna be uh, a big improvement over everything on this. The next thing that I wanna address are these these rollers. So. It looks like, and, and he mentioned this when, when he brought the stuff by, that they came in here and turned down um, this roller, this roller, and this roller, and put a sleeve on it and to build it back up, which is, is fine. That's, I think it's a fine repair. Although um, there's, I, I, there's some things in here that are a little concerning to me. Um, there's some dings in here. It's, it's, it's not, you got a, a big groove here that really shouldn't be there. On this one over here, it looks like someone, again, took an angle grinder or something and ground on this part of the shaft down here. I don't know why, uh, but the bottom line is that's not round, so that's gonna eat a bearing up. So that needs to be fixed and turned back around. Uh, this one here, uh, it got a little staining on there from the grease, but I think this bearing is actually in pretty good shape. The tops are actually, these are the tops. These are the bottoms down here. I don't think they did anything to these, but I think we need to do something to them. So game plan. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and weld up some of these areas that I see we got problems. And I mean, you got a little split right there. I'm going to clean them up, everything up good first. We'll go weld everything up and then we'll turn these down, uh, make them the same diameter so that the bearings, you can swap them around without any problems. And uh, we'll go from there. Just basically get them where they're both clean up. Doesn't matter what the diameter is as long as they are the same. Uh, that's the main thing. So, and same thing over here. Like I said, I think this bottom one is okay. The top one up here, you can't see it right now, but there's some pretty severe pitting in that one. I'm gonna probably weld it up, turn it down. So there we go, game plan. I will note on the gears too, that all these gears 
have been sleeved. Uh, they bore these out and put sleeves in here. Not sure exactly why they needed to do that because these gears don't turn on the shaft, or they shouldn't. Uh, so there's, it really shouldn't be a wear area. Um, but regardless, I'm not going to question it. They did it. It's not hurting anything. Um, and there may be, have been something going on there that I did not, not privy of here, not don't know about. So I'm not going to question it. It's fine. Not a big deal. So there we go. Let me get these things. I'm going to take them to the parts washer, clean them up, and uh, go over there and start welding. I didn't show it, but I went over and kind of welded up that little groove in here in this area down on the bottom side where they had gone in and done some grinding. My goal here is, is I don't want to take really any more off of this than I have to, but do want to get it to clean up and get a nice, uh, nice finish on there for a good uh, bearing journal. So let's get a cutter in here and see if we can't turn that out. We're just going to basically cut that weld off. Just take a little bit at a time. It's going to be an interrupted cut at first. And uh, hopefully get all that bad area out of there. And like I said, we'll just turn it down to whatever it turns down to to clean up. Just come in here with a little bit of emery cloth. Just want to polish this up. This is going to be a bearing surface. I want it to be as slick and smooth as possible. And we turn this to basically uh, two and an eighth inches in diameter, which uh, we'll try to keep that uniform between the two top bearings on these so that we can uh, swap our bearings around if necessary. And uh, they should fit both of them just fine. And that looks excellent. I'm very happy with how that turned out. We'll do the same thing on the other one. I left a little shoulder down here because that gear fits up over there and they've already got that sleeve on their turn to fit that diameter. Uh, that has been ground on a little bit, but I'm not too worried about it. It's, it's just, it, it's not a precision fit. That gear isn't anyway. So main thing I want to have is the bearing surface to be uh, nice and slicked up and ready for that good Babbitts to go on it. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing to the other one. Then we'll uh, also flip it around and, and freshen up the bottoms of these bearings as well, or these journals. I've got the small rollers all finished up on both sides. I didn't show all the work. Um, kind of giving you guys a quick tour on this one. This is the larger roller and uh, on the top part of this, it's running pretty true, but there was a fair amount of pitting in this area here where this bearing goes, probably where this cane mill set sitting for a long time and there was some moisture trapped between the uh, bearing and that shaft and it pitted out. So uh, my goal here is, is I wanna take just enough metal off of this to get it to clean up. I don't think the pitting's very deep. I don't think it's gonna take very much. This first cut is really just taking a few thousands. just a skim pass. And that's as deep as I wanna go. Once you get below that point right there where I'm at, you get into where that uh, gear fits down on there and I don't want to change that diameter down there. So let's just take a quick look and see where we're at here. Um, and you can kind of see it's cleaning up on the back side. This side here is a little bit of light pitting in there and uh, I'm going to get that out. We're probably going to take 20, 30 thousandths off of this, I'm guessing. So um, continue on. And there we go, nice and turned out, all polished up. We had to take about 25 thou off of that to, uh, to get that to clean up. Like I said, we left this alone down here. And that's been polished out, ready for a bearing, looks good. The other side of this is in pretty decent shape. Uh, that was redone at the machine shop. I'm probably gonna spin it around and just put some emery cloth on it. Probably not even gonna turn it. Um, I won't show that, but we'll have it ready to go as well. So give a quick update here. We got all of our rollers turned down and uh, everything looks great on these. And again, you know, it's a little bit below the, the original size of these shafts, but because we're gonna be pouring bearing, Babbitt bearings, they'll fit whatever we turn. Now on these rollers, because these are basically the same rollers and you have basically the same bearing on the top and the same bearing on the bottom, I made 
careful attention to make sure that these two shafts were the same size and these two shafts were the same size. Um, and they're nominal. I think this one was uh, two and an eighth and two and an eighth. I think I did both, both on the same side. I don't remember what these were. I think I just cleaned these up to whatever they came out to be with it's whatever they came out to be and I just uh, ended up I ended up having to turn this one just a little bit to clean it up this one we had to take about 25 thousandths off of it to get all that pitting out but uh, everything looks good and I think we're ready to see about pouring some bearings now I got all these bearings cleaned up and uh, we're going to melt this babbit out of these and re-pour everything now I will tell you that the guy that I'm doing this for he poured all these bearings himself uh, but didn't clean the shafts up and stuff like that first and I'm not sure exactly what went on it looks like they took a grinder in here to kind of make some of these bigger after the fact um, bottom line they all need to be replaced and particularly now that my shafts are different diameters than what they these were poured to we need to uh, melt them out and redo them. So, uh, and I'll comment that he did provide some Babbitt. He had bought some. This is uh, some that was left over that I've got some extra. So I know that all this Babbitt is this grade of Babbitt. And he told me this is a tin based Babbitt. I can tell by looking at it, it's a little bit shinier than typical Babbitt. Most Babbitt is lead based. Uh, this is a tin based Babbitt. Tin based Babbitts were used for. Um, higher speed shafts uh, when you had a little bit higher loading on them but the main reason he's using a tin based babbitt in this application is because this is going to be producing a food grade item you're basically making syrup grinding that cane and making syrup that will be used for food and uh, we want to make sure we don't have any lead can, potential lead contamination so we are using a tin based babbitt uh, to do these so I have got a little setup here where I can hopefully melt this stuff and go down to my ladle and uh, I just got something supported on and we'll go ahead and get all these melted out and we're going to reuse that babbitt and if we need some more of the extra stuff uh, we got it all right here we go babbitt melts at a generally low temperature compared to most uh, other metals that you would run into uh, this tin based babbitt though does melt at a little bit higher temperature than lead based babbitt I, I don't remember the exact numbers it probably depends on the exact um, alloy, but most uh, lead-based babbits melt at around 750 degrees, and that's a rough number. Whereas the tin-based babbits tend to melt up more around 800 and something degrees, so they do melt at a slightly higher temperature, but no big deal. Still relatively low in the grand scheme of things. And we're just going to go ahead and get all this melted out. They usually drill these little holes in the side of the bearings to kind of key that, that uh, casting in place so that whenever you uh, pour the bearing, those it'll go up into those little tabs and that just kind of keeps that uh, babbit from ever wanting to um, spin inside the shell. All right, I got uh, four more bearings to melt out. I'm going to do these off camera. You get the idea and uh, we'll be back once we get set up to do a pour. I've got my first shaft here ready to pour. And uh, basically we just cleaned up the bearing shells, took them to the wire wheel, got them all good and clean. And we've got it positioned. We're just going to use the uh, actual shaft here as a pouring mandrel. A lot of times, uh, depending on the circumstances, I may make a separate mandrel that's a different from the actual piece, but it's just going to be easier and quicker to do it this way. So uh, I've just got it on here. I'm using this uh, uh, Deacon mold pack, uh, which is just a material. It's kind of like 
Play-Doh or something like that that you can form around this. It serves two purposes. Number one, to position your part for your pour and also to dam it because there's, it's open on the end. So if we were poured in there, it would just flow right out. So this material dams it up. And uh, what we're gonna do now is come over here with a torch. We'll get this thing preheated. I've got my Babbitt sitting over here on the camp stove uh, melting. So it's just about ready to pour right now. And we'll come pour this bearing. Let's, uh, let's do it. All right, we're just gonna take the torch. Put a little preheat in here. You don't want your uh, metal to be too cold or it will cause that uh, Babbitt to cool too fast. So if we get this uh, shell and the shaft up to a couple hundred degrees, it really uh, just helps the whole pour. This uh, Deacon mold material, while it will burn a little bit, it's pretty much fire retardant, so uh, you don't have to worry about that too much. This is the same uh, Babbitt that we melted out of here. And we'll just come over and pour it in. There we go. Looks good. I spilt a little bit, no problem. I'll just put it, pick it back up, and put it back in the ladle and let it remelt. Get all this uh, stuff out. Our bearing falls off and we got a nice pour. One down. Um, same process I'm gonna use here on most of these bearings except for the two of them. I'm not gonna show all of them. Uh, you get the idea, we'll show the other two that's a little bit different here in a little bit. Two of the bearings, there's little small rollers on the bottom, they're in the, a, an enclosed cup rather than being a half shell, but only half of the bearing surface actually gets poured. The back side of this remains open. So what I've done, because of the, the size of that roller is so big you can't use the actual shaft to pour against. I made a mandrel. I just basically turned a piece of shafting down to the same size of, of the journal that's gonna fit in here, and we're gonna use that to pour on. And if you notice, I put some uh, filler on the back side. That'll keep the babbit from going around the back side of the shaft, and we'll only pour on the front half. So we'll heat this shell up, get our babbit ready to pour, and I got two of these to do. And I think we'll have all of our bearings done. Go ahead and put a little heat in here. Preheat my parts. And here we go. Let that cool down. Here we go, we got all of our bearings poured. Uh, some of these are still hot, these back here are. These have cooled off. I've already kind of dressed them up. I uh, haven't done any scraping on them yet, but all these bearings, they look great. Um, once we do a little scraping on them, get them fitting on those shafts just right, uh, I have no doubt these are gonna be just fine and hold up well, and uh, this uh, cane mill should be ready to go. Well, guys, I think we're about ready to put this thing back together. I've been doing a little bit of work off camera since I've done a video on restoring one of these fairly recently. I haven't really gone into every single detail on this whole project. I uh, just want to kind of hit the high spots. But uh, since we were last here, I've got all my bearings scraped. Everything fits the, the over here to the shafts. Uh, we got all the castings cleaned up and just painted them. Uh, I like to put a coat of paint on these rather than leaving them bare cast iron. I think it just holds up better uh, over the long run. So uh, I think we're ready to go. Oh, one other thing I'll mention is uh, the hardware, the adjustment screws on this. They were all in pretty rough shape. So uh, I'm gonna replace those. The uh, screws were, are kind of a square head set screw threaded all the way. I don't have any of the right size, so I'm gonna have to order some, but I had some 
bolts that I'm just sticking in there for right now. I can, once I get that new hardware in, I'll just unscrew those, put them in. There should be a jam nut on this side where you can tighten it all up. So that's the reason I need the threads all the way up. Uh, but I can order those from a master car, have them here in a day or two. Uh, I did have to make the square head nuts that go on these things uh, because of standard size is too small. It was turning in there. In fact, that was one of the problems that this mill had was they didn't have the right little square head nuts that fit down in here where they would be captured. And um, these were three quarter inch internal threads, inch and a quarter outside threads or outside uh, across the squares. Fortunately, I had a piece of inch and a quarter uh, square stock back there. And again, did it off camera, but I just made some nuts real quick over on the lathe. So let's uh, put this together. We're gonna start dropping our bearings in here in the bottom. So um, these two cup bearings go on the outside. Uh, the center bearing goes in here. It's, it doesn't have a cup in it. It just fits down in the slot. Now, one thing I will note is these bearings are a little bit different than normal Babbitt bearings and that they're only one sided. And that's because of the way the pressure is on this. Everything is pushing toward the center. And when you run the cane through there, it's pushing it out. So really only one half of the bearing is all you need for this thing to run. So there's no reason to have a, a bearing on both sides. Uh, only one side's gonna be touched, only one side's gonna wear. So they didn't put a bearing on the outside uh, and that's fine. Uh, I think I'm gonna run up to the house and get a little bit of vegetable oil. I don't wanna put uh, regular uh, oil in these because this is food grade again. So uh, I'm gonna put a little vegetable oil in here to give some lubrication and I don't have any of that in the shop. I'll be right back. Y'all don't tell my wife I borrowed this from the kitchen. Crisco vegetable oil here. We'll just uh, put a little bit on a rag and I will transfer this to the bearings. Just want a little bit of lube in here to help these things turn. And that is up back against that bearing. Now we'll put the two smaller rollers in. And one thing to note is there are two rollers and one of them is a smaller diameter than the other. And they're that way on purpose. The cane comes in one side and it goes, has a bigger gap it crushes the cane and then it goes through a second roller in the back, which is a little bit larger and it finishes crushing it. So it goes through two press wheels, but the first one is have a little bit more room in on purpose uh, in order to allow that to squeeze properly. So let me measure these real quick. I think this one's a smaller one, but I can't tell for sure by just looking at them. Yeah, this one's about a quarter of an inch smaller in diameter. So, all right, this one will drop down in this socket and it kind of fits up in there. You adjust these screws to tighten everything up. We'll do that at the very end. This larger wheel drops down this socket. There we go. All right, next, we'll put our sides in. These are basically, uh, obviously enclose everything, but they also kind of give a spacer between the top and the bottom. And there's just little hooks that can't catch in there. This one goes right here. Two on the front. And then we got a panel that goes on the front. And then we got, there's this piece here. This fits on this side over here and basically allows for the, uh, a place for the cane to enter into the mill. Probably should have done this before we put those side panels on, but no big deal. This big gear just drops down on there. And we have the two smaller gears here on the side. Again, they had 
put some spacers in there or bushings. Not exactly sure why, but they did. There they go. That one's in there. Same thing over here. Let's pull this out over here just above our staff and we'll start dropping it down. Alright, so as we get down here to the bottom, I got two studs on this side that have to get lined up and through these holes. There we go. Also, to make sure my rollers are in here, and they are. And then we've got the two studs back here on the back that need to line up as well. All right, I think we got it right there. Now I need to get my strap out. There we go. Ah! My panel needs to go back in. There's just a couple of ears on here that catch this. Let's see if we can pick it up. This one moved back. And I think we got it. All of our panels are captured where they need to be. Looks good. So I want to oil these uh, bearings that go on the top. There's a bearing block that'll drop right in there. Got one that's going to drop in right there. And we got one that's going to drop in back here. All right, so that is all in there together. We'll screw these down now. I'm replacing these square head nuts with new nuts. I'm pretty much trying to replace all the hardware on here. I did have uh, these nuts here in my in stock. These are just five eighths inch square head nuts. Pretty standard size that I use a lot. So let's get these on. And I think we'll have her pretty well together. Next, what I want to do is adjust these bearings a little bit. These uh, screws just kind of go up and press onto the, the bearings in there and tighten things up. And like I said, I will be replacing these with uh, the proper hardware uh, once I get it ordered. It just needs to be a set screw rather than a bolt and there'll be a jam nut so that once you get them adjusted, you can tighten it up on this side over here and everything will be fine and dandy. This is the direction it'll turn. And that's turning great. I'm happy with that. Hopefully this will serve him well. And uh, I'll just mention real quickly uh, his setup. He actually has a electric motor that goes to a, uh, this whole thing sits on a frame. It's got an electric motor. I can't remember how many horsepower, but it goes through a 90 degree gearbox that uh, basically 
turns the RPMs way down and uh, he's, he's made an adapter that fits over this square shank on the top. Originally this would have been mule powered. There would have been a casting that fit on this or been a long beam that came out across it. You would hook a mule up and that mule would just walk around in a circle and that's what would uh, power this thing. One horsepower, right? One mule power. <laughs> And, uh, and he's got it rigged up with a motor that basically does the same thing. I don't have all that here in the shop, but that's how he's gonna be running this thing. And with any luck, he's gonna be grinding cane here in about a month and making some good old fashioned South Georgia cane syrup. And uh, he's actually invited me to come over when he does some grinding. If it works out to my schedule, I may try to get over there and get some video and show you guys this process because uh, uh, it's kind of a neat process. Now, I will say too that on the original cane mill, there were some covers that went over these, uh, these bearings right here. Didn't have that. Uh, you know, we could probably get some cast if he really wanted to. I'd have to find some to use as patterns, but you know, that's definitely something doable but all in all uh, I'm real happy with how this one turned out uh, it's gonna make a make a nice cane mill I think and should uh, hold up much better than what he had before uh, with this thing set up like this it'll probably last him the rest of his life no more than he's gonna use it uh, it's not like these things ran for days on the end they would only got used uh, once a year to make a couple of batches of uh, cane syrup you know, on the farm that's generally how they were used so with that guys that's going to be a wrap as always i thank you guys for watching please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already uh, i'm gonna put some links down in the comments or down in the description to some of my other cane mill videos restorations that i've done uh, in case you're interested want to go back again i went into a little bit more detail on some of the other ones that i did on this one uh, but anyway always a fun project i've lost count as to how many of these things i've restored now um, but glad to keep this tradition alive or be a part of keeping this tradition alive by helping restore some of these old cane mills. And guys, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.